Hello everyone, today I will be showing you a quick and easy way to make time-lapse videos with 100% free software, no trial versions, no 30-day this, no you have to enter your email that, very, e not really easy, but you'll be able to get the hang of it pretty quickly so long as you follow this tutorial. Now the program that this will be based around is Virtual Dub, it's not incredibly popular I think I'm not sure it comes up a lot if you're looking for free video editors and I don't really use it too much for most things but it works really well for time lapses now virtual dub it's only available for Windows platforms unfortunately so if you're running Mac or Linux you'll probably have to find something else but yeah it's a free download so we'll just go over here virtual dub downloads and it's available via SourceForge now likely you're gonna want the 64-bit version because who runs 32-bit computers nowadays, and you will be able to download Virtual Dub. Now, it's not really an installer, per se. It's more of a just overall package. If we open the zip file, we'll see that it's just this big bunch of files. Now, it doesn't install. You just put this into a directory, and then you run it from there. So we'll go into our folder that we want to create it in. I have a programs folder and we'll make a new folder called virtual dub. So we have our folder. So then we just want to move the things from the zip file into our folder. And here we go. So let's just verify that it works. So let's run VDub this one. Let's run this one. It looks bigger. We'll see if it works. .exe and here we go, this one seems to work. So this is what we're gonna run if we need to open Virtual Dub. But one thing that we wanna do, well, you could be done at this point with installs, but Virtual Dub by default only exports uncompressed AVI files. Now, if you're working with very short video clips, this can be okay, but honestly, you're gonna want some sort of compression if you don't want files that are dozens of gigabytes in size. So for this, we're going to need XVID video compressor. I believe it's based around MP4 compression, but you'll be able to get this to install with Virtual Dub. Looks like the second mirror was the only one that worked. Once again, saving it to our downloads folder. And this one is an installer, so we will run this once it's done. So it's done downloading. Let's run it. And we will select English, of course, because that's the language I am speaking right now. And we will accept the agreement that we all totally read, and we can install it to the default directory. We can automatically notify about updates because that's fine. We won't use it to play back anything else because we have VLC and other programs. So now it will install, which shouldn't take too long because there isn't very much here. All right, we don't need to view the readme because I'll be able to get this set up pretty easily. So now XVID codec is installed on our computer and we can use it with various programs. So let's go back into our virtual dub. Go to video compression and we should see an option for XVID, XVID MPEG4 codec. And we can go in here and this is now gonna be our default. Well, that's not gonna be our default. Every time we start virtual dub, we'll have to go in here and select it. But we wanna configure it to our liking. So our profile level, this, you can look up things about this. I just chose level four because it seems reasonable enough. And I wanna set it to one maximum quality because honestly the file size isn't much. And I plan on putting the exported files from Virtual Dub into a secondary editor like Sony Movie Studio or really anything just for like more general purpose editing that is a bit more easy to do and a bit more powerful than the basic functions of virtual dub but I consider this setting to be pretty decent and this will be fine so hit OK so now that's saved in our XVID MPEG4 codec profile and we won't need to reconfigure this for later we'll just have to go in here and select XVID MPEG4 so we can hit OK there and now that's set up so we have our compressor installed and we have virtual dub installed so Let's open up a file. Now for a time lapse that's composed of several images, we can use one method that I really enjoy. So first we'll have to navigate 
to our SD card and find our time-lapse files. Of course, I do a lot of 3D printing here, so this will be a 3D printing time-lapse. Now, an important thing to mention is that all of the images have to be the same size. If we look, right now they're all the same size, but say this picture here, it's 6,000 by 4,000, which, I mean, it's a large image, but it doesn't matter how big the image is, so long as that all of the images you import are the same size. And because I don't need the images to be high resolution, I stepped the resolution down one setting on my camera, the Nikon D3200, and I also bumped down the compression level a little bit so that the images don't take up too much space, because in video files, they're way more compressed than images. So I'll go down here until it looks like it's about done, and I will control X to get them cut into my clipboard, and I will move them to a temporary folder. This isn't really a necessary step, but it is useful for keeping things organized. So I have a temporary folder here, and I can just delete everything from there. It's fine, because I've already used those in a video and I'll just paste them into here. So now we have all of our images. We want to go up to our very first image and click on it. And then we hit Control A to select all of these images and then F2, or you can hit right click, rename, wherever that is. Yeah, you can right click, rename, or press F2 like I like to do, and you can rename it. Now it'll only look like you're renaming this image, but you're actually renaming every single image that you have selected but appended to the end, it will have in parentheses like one, two, three, and so on. And that numbering system is what Virtual Dub reads in order to verify the order of images that it's importing. So I just rename it like zero or something. It doesn't matter what you name your image because after you hit enter, everything will be renamed sequentially like this. And even though the numbers, it's not just a pure number in the file name, Virtual Dub will be able to handle this. So file, open video file, it automatically knows that I want to go to temp because I've done this before and we want to select this image and make sure that it says automatically load linked segments so it basically looks for numbers and similar files to load onto the end so we have this hit open and we can see down here on our timeline we have a whole bunch of frames and we can scrub through it although right now we just see a zoomed in portion of part of the image that's because this image is a lot larger than the screen that I'm displaying it on. And at this point, you could export it, but we want to make sure that we have a few settings dialed in. Mainly, the video size and the video frame rate. So I like to start out with frame rate. We can go in here, video, frame rate, also control R. If you do this a lot, you'll learn the keyboard shortcuts pretty quick. And because I only have 240 frames here, I want this to be about 10 seconds long. So I can change the frame rate to 24. Hit enter, we're good. And now we want to make sure that our compression is set up. So we have XVID selected, that's good. And now we want to go into filters and add a filter. And there's a lot of different filters here. I haven't experimented with them, but we want to go to resize. And one quick way to find it is to just hit R and it'll automatically select it, hit okay and now we have our options. Now if you want to go directly to a 16 by 9 video file, standard HD is 1920 by 1080, so we want 1080 in here. But we want to make sure that our width, that basically, we want to make sure that none of these dimensions are smaller than what we want. So because this one's smaller, we'll put 1920 in here. So now this one is slightly bigger, so that means the height of our image is more than 1920 by 1080 standard resolution. Now what we can do is our framing option. So we want to select crop to aspect ratio, and this crop will be 16 by 9, because that's standard widescreen HD. So we have this scaled down to reasonable levels, and we have it cropped. Now, if you're putting this into an external video editor where you can zoom in on things, I would actually recommend skipping the framing options, so then you can zoom into portions of your video within your video editor so that you can like do pans and stuff in your time lapse. But right now we are assuming that this is the only tool you have. So this is all set up good, we will hit OK, and that resizing thing is now applied. 
So we have our frame rate set up, our video size, our crop, and our compressor. So we are ready to export. So we can go here, file, save as AVI, or just hit F7, and we can put it in here. Now, because this was a VR headset, we can do that, and we will hit save. And these windows will pop up. I'm sure if you knew a lot about video compression, you would know what all of these numbers and graphs mean. But right now, we can just sort of look at this bar go up and see our projected file size. It'll be about 100 megabytes, which for a low compression, high, res not really high resolution, but HD video file is reasonable. And it also tells you how fast it's rendering and roughly how much time will take to finish. And of course, if you have a faster computer, this will take less time. So it is now finished. We can minimize this, minimize that. And I just have it in here. So VR headset visor, double click this to open and see how well it worked. And we can see that it's at 24 frames per second. It is cropped to 16 by nine and it is also the right resolution. You see it completed and now it is done playing. So there is how we create a time lapse from images. Now, what if you want to create a time lapse from a video file? Well, let's see. Now, unfortunately, OBS doesn't support every single type of video file, and it seems like MP4 is one of them. So if I try to open this, it'll say unknown or unsupported file type. There's likely an extension to fix that. Now, in order to load standard video files that are likely to come out of your camera, you're going to need to install this plugin. This one specifically is the FFmpeg input plugin, and it lets you open several different video files in VirtualDub, which will be useful if you want to use VirtualDub to edit things that come from your camera and want to edit video files other than standard AVI, which is actually pretty unlikely if you're shooting on a modern camera. You'll want to go down here to the standalone, which you can place in the plugins folder of your VirtualDub installation. So in our virtual dub installation folder, which we created earlier, we will just take plugins 64 and plugins 32 and extract them into this folder here. And the plugin 64 folder will merge with the one that was already in there. And now the next time we start virtual dub, we should have these input, these uh, plugins installed. Open an MP4 and it worked. This is a uh, time, this is a shot from uh, making something in Inventor Fusion. It's quite long, but this will be a good example for making a time lapse out of a video. So once again, go to our frame rate. It was shot at five frames per second in order to reduce file size. So say I have this video file and I want to speed it up by 10 times. Multiply this five by 10 to get 50. And our output, we want to be 30 frames per second. So convert to FPS 30 in the frame rate conversion section, and to speed it up, we change this to 50. So we hit OK. We don't need any resizing filters because it's already the size that I need. And now I will hit Control P in order to select, once again, XVID MPEG-4 codec. And now F7, we can export it as another test time lapse. And once again, we can see it go. And now with this one, we'll actually be able to see each frame as it's being rendered. So now that it is finished, we can go back to where we exported it to, and we can open it up and see that it did indeed work, and it is playing back at 30 frames per second and 10 times faster. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a like so that other people can find this, and if you found it useful, let me know. If you have any other questions regarding making time lapses, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm pretty active down there. But anyways, thank you for watching.